Dwayne at RealPicturesRealFast.com. Today we're working on a 97 Ford Explorer, and the complaint is we kind of have a clicking, clunking, clattering noise, mostly when you're just driving at low speed. When you just move along, you can hear that clattery noise. Turns out that it's the rear universal joint in the front drive shaft. We're going to show you how to approach that and how to replace it. 97 Explorer, when we take it across a lot, it had a squeaky noise about walking speed, very annoying. When you get underneath it, you was able to get a hold of this front drive shaft. This rear joint back here had a lot of squeaking, popping noises in it. So, a lot of you are familiar with this type of U-joint, which is the style that's on the front. The back is not made like this. It's a, it's a ball version. We'll show you that later when we're on the bench. But in the meantime, there's some bolts back here you have to take loose, some bolts and clips up here, the drive shaft to come out, and we'll show you it to you on the bench. When you get this drive shaft out of the vehicle, the style of U-joints that we showed you previously that you're probably familiar with is this style. You want to be careful when you're taking this out. If these caps come off here, the bearings can go everywhere and have a big mess. So one of the things you want to do while you go to work on that, put your piece of tape around it. <clears throat> if this joint has play in it or it's rusted up, bad, be time to replace it also. Dorman's got a kit in the box. Comes with these components in it. As you can see, this boot's ripped open. This joint's not moving very freely. And it's kind of gummy and rusty. You can see up in this joint, it's all gummy, nasty, lots of dirt, debris, and time and rust. Obviously, big difference between the, being able to see the components with the rotating balls in there and swivel head and stuff with the new and the old. There's a clip. It's out here on this edge. are a little bit difficult to deal with. You pop that clip off. It's got an open end here. Specialty type pliers that get up in here and spread that. You got another band clip that's in the back of this. Get it opened up a little bit. Slide that assembly off. Clean some of the old debris off. A couple of different style clips that can go on. Old style clip. You get a hold of this, you hold this with a tool and you pull on it, and it bends over a couple of tabs that lock over as one style. The one that came with it, a little different, it's got more wrappings to it. Again, you pull on it, bend it over and tab it. You want to put it on first.
gonna have to walk this boot back. It's a little snug because it's new. There's a groove in this axle. When you get that boot back into that groove, then when you put that band clamp on there, it'll lock that in place. You want to get a hold of the edge of this band with something that'll hold it while you pull on the other side. Allows you to bring it down to roughly the size you need. This goes in a groove on this tool, groove on the tool the other side. You wind it around and start tightening it. Sets the tension on that band. If you get too carried away with the tension on that, you can cut the rubber so you don't want to go too tight. If you don't get the tension enough, let the grease sling out of it. So you want to get just a little bit of squeeze to that rubber and then bend the top of the band over so that it locks that in place. Take your tool off. Tap this edge over, then the tangs over on here. Again, you don't want to get too carried away with the hammer because it will also cause the band to cut that rubber. You get just a little bit of clearance on that, get your pliers on there, snip the end of that, and I like to bend that back over. This head will go on there. If you look at this, it's got a ridge. This ridge goes to the outer side. And that'll go up in there. You slide that back in place. There's a new clip. Again, you use the spreading pliers on that new clip. I'm going to make sure that, that clip gets down in that groove good, but it stays locked in. You've got a accordion style bottle. That way when you squeeze the grease out of it, you can uh, collapse it. You want to put some grease up in these balls. And that's the reason you want to have this accordion style unit is you can force that up in them. When you're putting the face of this on, you want to make sure you get your, your bolt holes lined up. This is going to end up having bolts come through from this side. You've got some Allen headed style bolts that came in the kit. In this particular case, we won't be able to use them. The original bolts. about a quarter inch longer. So in this case we're going to have to use the original bolts. Leaves enough of the bolt head thread sticking through to actually get a bite on these. When you install these bolts in there, there's not any nuts on the back side of this. The other part of the hub that this bolt to has the threads in the other hub. Okay, with the new Join on the back side, set it up in place.
because you don't want your caps to come off have needles scattered everywhere. You can start these with a torque screwdriver, but you'll have to torque them by hand with a proper wrench once you get them close. When you get them generally pulled up with the air tool, I would highly recommend finish them by hand so you get them just right. Alright, after you get the front and rear all torqued down, got ready to go, we'll go for test drive and see if we got the results we need.